Hey, in this video we're talking about the differences between supercharging and turbocharging. If you're here for the first time and you would like to learn more about cars, how they work, what car you should buy, car reviews or any other random facts about cars, then you should be considered subscribing. We all want to add more power to our engines. In naturally aspirated ones, the only ways to increase power is to increase the engine's displacement or to increase compression ratio. To get even more power out of our engines, we need to force more air into the cylinders. To do that, we can use supercharging or turbocharging. However, there are a few differences between supercharging and turbocharging and we'll be discussing them right now. A supercharger is a mechanical component which usually sits on top of the engine and it's directly connected to the crankshaft. Superchargers are generally used on cars with engine displacements above 3 liters, but there are a few exceptions as well. For example, in a Mercedes C-Class 180 compressor, we can see a 1.6 engine with a supercharger. A turbocharger is a component which is generally located after the exhaust manifold or around the exhaust manifold. You can learn more about this topic on this video right over here. High performance cars have at least two turbochargers. So what are the pros and cons for turbochargers and superchargers? Let's start with supercharging. The pros. Great throttle response. A supercharged engine feels almost like a naturally aspirated one. Well, not exactly, but around 90% like a naturally aspirated engine. They're pretty close. Great performance even at low revs. In turbocharged engines, we need at least 2000 RPM in order to move the compressor to get extra boost from the turbocharger. In supercharged engines, you can have boost even at low revs. There are no deposits or black carbon on the supercharger. Unlike turbochargers which get black and oily over time, superchargers are much cleaner. And now for the cons. They need more space to be mounted. In some extreme cases, we need to cut the hood in order to mount the supercharger. If you watched Fast and Furious, you might have seen Dom's car having a large supercharger on top of its hood. Well, that's one of the cases. They're inefficient in terms of fuel consumption. Unlike turbochargers which need the exhaust gases to move the compressor, a supercharger needs power to obtain more power. This results in a higher fuel consumption. And this is the main reason why most manufacturers have chosen to use turbocharging over supercharging. And now let's get into turbocharging. The pros. Variety. You can have fixed geometry, variable geometry, twin scroll turbos, without twin scroll turbos you can have one, two, three, even four turbochargers mounted on one engine. Two examples of having four turbochargers would be the BMW 750D which has a 3 liter inline 6 diesel engine with four turbochargers or the Bugatti Veyron which has an 8 liter W16 quad turbocharged gasoline engine. Efficiency. Turbocharged engines, especially in diesel ones, are highly efficient. Costs. Manufacturing and maintenance costs in turbocharged engines are lower compared to supercharged ones. And now for the cons. Turbochargers can get damaged pretty easily if the car isn't driven properly. For example, if you constantly drive a turbocharged diesel engine between 1500 and 2000 RPM, or if you kick down the acceleration at 1200 RPM, you might destroy the turbocharger. Turbo lag. This is by far the main reason why I hate turbochargers. You can have between 0.5 and 1.5 seconds until you get the boost out of a turbocharger. To reduce lag, we should have at least two turbochargers or at least have a turbocharger with twin scroll technology. Another difference between turbocharging and supercharging is the sound. The supercharger has a sharp constant sound. while the turbocharger has a surge and a blow-off sound. You can clearly make the difference by yourself. In both cases, you can modify the pressure in the turbocharger or the supercharger and you can gain more power. I would like to hear from you guys what kind of engine do you prefer? A naturally aspirated one, a turbocharged one, or a supercharged one. My personal choice is naturally aspirated. That's why Lamborghini still uses naturally aspirated engines and I'm pretty sure that they know what they're doing. Nowadays, more than 80% of vehicles produced around the world are turbocharged, especially in Europe. 
if I go to a car dealer right now at any kind of brand, I don't know if I may find a few cheap models which still have naturally aspirated engines. And those engines are tiny. So these are the main differences between turbocharging and supercharging. If you have anything else to add on this topic, please feel free to write in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll talk to you guys soon.